The universe is the mysterious creation of a vast intelligence. The origin of the world and life is beyond human understanding. The Vedas describe how consciousness is transformed into energy and matter. This process of creation and becoming is going on today, right now. This is not a theory or a religious doctrine. With these keys of understanding, you can see it for yourself. Namaste. So now for the grand finale, <laughs> where we tie together all the themes that we have explored in this whole series. And then we'll introduce you to a trove of information <laughs> about the Matrika, huh? which is after all the theme of this whole series. So let's just go back and review for a few minutes. Remember, we started showing the evolution of sound with the five tattvas, the non-dual tattvas that emerge from Brahman or Parashiva. And the Shiva tattva gives rise to Parashabda, transcendental sound. The Shakti tattva gives rise to Pashyanti Shabda, which is speech. Sada Shiva Tattva gives rise to Madhyama Shabda, which is the silent chanting of mantras. Ishwara Tattva gives rise to Vaikari Shabda, the subtle sound that is carried in the heart. And finally, Shuddha Vidya Tattva is the gross speech that we know as words and language. Next, we saw how Parashiva emits the Karana Bindu, or cause, whereas Parashakti emanates the Karya Bindu, or the effect. Then these combine to form the Sita and Shona Bindus, which combine to form the Nada Bindu. So all sound, all Nada, is the combination of Shiva and Shakti. And we call these the three Bindu, or Kamakala. Kamakala is Ing, the root of all mantras. And this Kamakala emits the various sound, sounds from the three Bindus, Sita, Shona, and Mishra. And we went through all these in the previous series. So next, we showed how the Pashyanti Shabda, the language, the beginning of language in subtle sound, emits the Madhyama Shabda, which is the, the beginning of vocalization, still silent, but now differentiated. And this gives rise to the matrika, the alphabet, which develops into the gross shabda, vaikari shabda, or speech, with its syllables, words, and sentences. And finally, we want to show the vaikari shabda how it manifests in the matrika with 51 akshara, or letters, the devata, or the 51 goddesses of the Sri Chakra, or Sri Yantra, nyasa, the 51 nadis of the body, and their associated goddesses, and finally, Pita, the 51 places or locations around India, which are the temples of these 51 goddesses. Now, we're not going to enumerate all these 51 things, <laughs> or actually four times 51, uh, in this video. 
But what we did was we made a collection of documents. There are three documents which are linked in the description of this video, which you can download and contain a wealth of information. That's too much to put in a video, but it's all very useful. And it also contains practices. So let's go over these one at a time. What is going to be present in these documents? And then I'll explain how they interrelate. First of all is the 51 uh, letters of the Sanskrit alphabet, the akshara. Now each of the aksharas has a meaning. Each letter of the Sanskrit alphabet has a meaning. It's probably the only language in the world, at least to my knowledge, where the letters have significance. In every other language, they don't have any significance until they form words. But in Sanskrit, the letters themselves have meaning. So this is a tremendous advance over any other language in the world. So we have in one document, the 51 Aksharas, and their meanings, and the goddesses, the Shaktis, associated with each one. Then in the next document, we give the 51 goddesses again. Uh, it's almost like where, where the first document leaves off, the second document takes up. We show the 51 goddesses and the letters that they're associated with and the places on the body where those goddesses reside or where their influence should be felt to give optimum health and consciousness. And there's a ritual called nyasa. Nyasa means that we take that vibration and use, using a mudra like this, huh? the, the third finger and the thumb together, we place that mantra in the proper place on the body. And there are 51 places all over the body and the face and everything, uh, which are detailed in this document and which show how to practice this nyasa. Finally, the third document shows the 51 pitas, shakti pitas, which are locations all over India greater India, including Bangladesh and what is now Pakistan. And these temples are exactly corresponding to the 51 letters of the alphabet, parts of the body, and the goddesses. So first of all, let me tell you the story. When Daksha was performing a great sacrifice, he very pointedly did not invite Lord Shiva. Daksha was a householder and he didn't like that Shiva was a renunciant living in the forest and hanging out with ghosts and demons <laughs> and just meditating and not earning money and like this. So he was, you know, Shiva is kind of like the first hippie. <laughs> so Daksha didn't invite him. But his daughter, Uma, didn't like this at all. So she showed up at the sacrifice. And as Shiva's wife, she was completely dedicated to him. And then when she heard Daksha uh, disrespect Shiva, she immolated herself with self-caused fire. And then Shiva came with his army and destroyed the entire sacrifice. And he kind of went a little bit crazy. <laughs> and he took uh, Uma's body, or what was left of her body, and he was roaming around the cosmos, just wailing and crying and, and freaking out, you know. And everything in the universe was going crazy because of him. He has so much power that when he freaks out, like everybody freaks out. So Vishnu was called upon by the demigods to please solve this problem. So Vishnu approached Shiva and cut up the body of Uma, 
the dead body into 51 pieces. And these 51 pieces landed in different spots in India and temples were built at each place. And so these are the 51 temples or places of pilgrimage which exist today and which you can go to and perform the appropriate rites or you can by mantra. By doing this process, you can uh, get the same benefit as darshan of those temples. So these are the things all based on the matrika, the 51 letters. So you might ask, well, what is this matrika? The matrika is a matrix. Matrix, of course, means an origin, a mother, and it also means like a table huh, with rows and columns, like a crossword puzzle or something. And this uh, organizes the 51 letters into several categories. So let me show you the first category is the Sanskrit vowels. A, A, I, I, U, U, Ri, Ri, R, A, I, O, Au, N, the Anuswara, the nasal termination, and Aha, the Visarga, or the final aspiration. Then, there are the Sanskrit consonants. First, the gutturals. Ka, ka, ga, ga, na. Then the palatals. Cha, cha, ja, ja, nya. Then the cerebrals. Ta, ta, da, da, na. The dentals. Ta, ta, da, da, na. The labials, pa, pa, ba, ba, ma. The semi-vowels, ya, ra, la, va. And the sibilants, sha, sha, and sa. Now maybe it's hard for Western people especially to tell the difference between some of these pronunciations. But here in India, especially Hindi speakers in North India can hear the difference between these different consonants. And so when you speak and, and use the proper tongue position and mouth position, they go, oh yeah, you, can, you know this. <laughs> so this is why I'm very particular about Sanskrit pronunciation and writing in all of our uh, videos and course materials. And all of our course students have to go through a course on Sanskrit where they learn to write, at least in the IAAST, the International Alphabet for Sanskrit Transliteration, uh, which you see next to the letters on these alphabet charts. And also, they learn to pronounce them properly, uh, because after all these years, I can hear the difference. <laughs> But anyway, these are more than just sounds. Each of these sounds has a meaning, and those meanings are given in the documents. Uh, so you should download these documents if you're at all serious about this, you know. If you're not just viewing this for entertainment or thrills, you know. Oh, wow, Swamiji said something really far out. <laughs> no, it's meant for serious study and contemplation. And with a Sanskrit dictionary, you can see how the meanings of the letters combine to form the meanings of the words. So I'm not gonna go into all of that now. That's for our serious students on our course site. And what I want you to uh, bear in mind or take away from this video is that there is a seamless integration from the very first vibration of duality in the universe, Aum, right down the line through all the generations of the tattvas and the substances of the creation 
through to the language, the letters, the pronunciation, and the mantras. And when the mantras, the Sanskrit mantras, are correctly pronounced, they have creative potency equal to that of the Godhead. Try to understand. This is why, you know, in, in my early days as a disciple under my Adi Guru, I did so many things that I didn't understand just on his authority, just because I trusted him, just because I could see that he's in an exalted state of consciousness. Then I followed his instructions and we did so many things like that in the temple. But now, after what, 50 years of additional research, I found the scriptural sources that give the reasons for all these instructions. And now I understand why we were to do all those things. And I also can understand why he didn't have time to explain everything. <laughs> because it takes a tremendous amount of knowledge to understand why the different practices of yoga and so forth, so forth are the way they are and why they should not be any other way. So when I hear, for example, a Western speaker uh, pronounce the word Ananda, huh? <laughs> I go, ah, no, it's Ananda, you see? And, you know, then there's the, the really hard words like Sarshti, huh? These are really hard to pronounce for Westerners, but if you can pronounce them properly, and speak the mantras at the right time, at the right point in the ceremony, in the right place and in the right association, you get the results. So what we're after is a result, okay? And we're giving the tools on how to attain that result. And this is the wisdom that leads to liberation. Aung Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.